I guess I better introduce myself. I'm Darren, 54 years old, married for 28 years to Caroline, 55 years old. When I met Caroline, I was 24 and already teaching art at the local high school. We live on the Yorkshire coast in the north of England. I remember the first time I saw her, she was wearing a short skirt and I remember thinking, I never realized I was a foot lover. She had a beautiful pair of legs, and although her breasts were only a size two, she arched her back so much that it looked very curvy. She was bubbly and giggly, and I thought she was the most beautiful person I had ever seen, but she didn't believe that she was beautiful. And I believed and planned to spend the rest of my life making her feel beautiful. She just couldn't see what I saw. She saw a round, plump face and a nose that was slightly larger than it should have been, and I saw her beautiful blue eyes turn green when she cried in tearful films. I saw her beautiful smile and cupid bow lips. I saw perfection. I'm well, I'm tall, six feet four inches and tower over Kaz at five feet tall iron inch. I have dark hair, now streaked with gray, green eyes, and I still look as good as they tell me. Kaz doesn't give many compliments. He thinks I know I still look good. When we first met, she called me Clarky saying that with my dark hair and glasses, I looked like Clark Kent. It took me a while to convince her to go on a date with me. I always reminded her that I loved her longer than she loved me. But when we finally started dating, it was love. We got engaged within three months. Crazy, I know. We got married the next year, but I never had pre-wedding jitters. I just adored her. Just. She wasn't perfect, but neither was I. She had a terrible personality and could be selfish, but to me, she was perfect. 28 years later, we celebrated our son Scott's 21st birthday. We struggled to have him. It took us years, and we were never able to have any more children. It was something we still find painful. But we couldn't complain because some people are never blessed and our Scott was a true blessing. He was a son any man could be proud of. He was the kind of kid you could take with you anywhere. Now, as an adult... He could talk to anyone, make them feel at ease, and had a fun, engaging personality. Our Scott charmed everyone, from babies to old people. Scott and I were very close and shared the same sense of humor. He often said what I was going to say before I had a chance to say it. We spent a lot of time together and he called me his buddy and also his father. I know you're supposed to be your child's parent, not their friend, but I hope I did both. How could I not want a wonderful kid like him to be my buddy? We could be very similar in character, but we were not at all alike. All fathers want their children to be like them. I think it's something Neanderthal, but Scott is not like that. The Kaz family had exceptionally strong genes. They were all similar to each other. Kaz and her cousins were similar. Scott was like his mom, her dad, and everyone else in her family. When we looked after Kaz's sister's children, our nephews, we could never convince strangers that the three cousins were not brothers and that Kaz was not the mother of all three. We enjoyed spending time with our nephews because it gave us an idea of what life could be like with a large family. Well, a large family was not destined to appear. We were very lucky that we didn't have any serious money problems. We loved spending time together. Kaz and I could never understand those couples who spent weekends apart. We often watched our neighbors take turns going out with friends while the other one looked after the children. We love spending time together. We were just that kind of couple. I still love her as much as before and find her very attractive. She definitely doesn't look her age. We both looked like a couple in their 40s rather than 50. This is helped by Kaz's hair, which still has no gray in it. This is another family trait, as her father was the same. Their hair fades to a softer shade rather than turning gray or white. The only blemish on our marriage in recent years has been a somewhat faded bedroom. We have always had a very active sex life. Kaz had only had one boyfriend before me, and although she wasn't a virgin when we met, she was quite inexperienced. I was, however, quite busy at university, and Kaz was very receptive and surprised that I was sharing my skills with her. In recent years, as Kaz went through menopause, she lost all interest in sex. Soon, any sexual contact became rare. This was very frustrating for me and caused some frustration in our marriage. 
I guess it made me feel less of a man and less attractive. Kaz showed her legendary personality whenever I tried to broach the subject, and I found it so difficult because not only did I still find her very attractive, but I still had a pretty teenage libido. Regardless, I loved her so much that, albeit reluctantly, I learned to live with it. It hurt, but I had no intention of moving beyond the marriage. Loyalty and trust were important to me. One day I had a senior colleague, Trevor. He was about 50 years old at the time and recently divorced. He got very drunk at a corporate party, and I was assigned to accompany him home. Home now was a rather bare little apartment, and over a cup of coffee he told me his story. He loved his wife very much, but when he began to suffer from erectile dysfunction, she decided to satisfy her needs elsewhere. She looked at it as something completely separate from their love marriage and seemed shocked that Trevor had divorced her. Trevor's ex-wife now lives alone in another apartment, still shocked that her lack of fidelity to her husband could lead to her new life. The sad thing is that later a simple change of blood pressure medication solved all of Trevor's problems in this area. Too late for his first marriage, but just in time for his second, which provided him with a very happy old age. I could never change Kaz just to satisfy my sexual needs. My beautiful Kaz has given me a wonderful son, a home and memories. I had to embrace this new phase in our lives with love. One of the things Scott and I shared was a love of genealogy. We were very excited to find out we were related to royalty. Yes, my great-grandfather in the 30th generation was a king. Yes, I understand that along with many thousands of others, but it's still exciting. As a result... There were thousands of names on our family tree. Kaz wasn't interested. She said that this was just a list of dead people. We tried to interest her, but she didn't care. When I got a DNA kit a few years ago, I offered to buy her one. But she had one of her legendary tantrums. She was categorically against it, saying that they would know everything about me. It was not entirely clear to me who they were, this big brother, and what they were going to do with this information about a fairly ordinary high school teacher. Either way, I've come to terms with it. It just became my thing, and it was great to have a separate interest for once. Anyway, several years later, Scott and I still occasionally looked at the Ancestry site, especially after an interesting post appeared there. After we realized that we were not going to look for more prominent relatives, our interest waned slightly. Scott loved checking out my DNA matches from around the world, which often appeared as more people joined the site. I believe it was my Irish heritage that provided the matches around the world as many people dispersed after the potato famine. So I decided that as an extra gift for Scott's 21st birthday, I would purchase an Ancestry DNA testing kit. The fact that it was on special offer probably also helped Ed. Being a little bussy leading up to his birthday, I ordered it a little late. When he came, a few days after his birthday, we quickly made it, and I sent him to school. I didn't tell his mother about this, because I knew her attitude towards such things. Anyway, it was one of my shared hobbies with Scott. I certainly didn't want her to start the whole they and big brother thing again, who would now be watching Scott as well. So when I came home one evening a few days later and found that my life as I knew it was over, I couldn't have been more shocked. Kaz cried on the sofa in the conservatory. She cried as if her heart was truly broken. My first thought was to ask who died. I rushed to her and hugged her. For a while she could not speak, and I just hugged her, begging her to tell me what happened. She eventually managed to slip in that she was discussing paper recycling in a container and saw a cardboard box that contained a DNA testing kit. At this point, I felt a little sick. It was a serious reaction, even for Kaz. I started to panic, and it felt like my stomach had dropped to the floor. I could barely comprehend what she said. Scott is yours, Darren. He is yours. You are his father, but I got pregnant from someone else. I did it for us. I swear. Silence seemed to envelop me for a second until I found myself pounding. Eventually, I calmed down enough to turn to her and shout, For us? Yes, so that we can become a family, she said quietly. And then the old Kaz returned and shouted back, 
It was a long time ago, Darren. I knew I couldn't talk to her calmly. I was too angry. But I just couldn't leave until I knew more. You heard what the doctor said, Kaz. You heard him say that there's nothing wrong with either of us. There is no reason why we couldn't have a child. My swimmers may not have been Olympic champions, but they were pretty average and could get the job done. There's nothing wrong with you, either. I know one of your ovaries wasn't working at full capacity, but the other one was fine. That's why they didn't intervene earlier. We just needed time. I didn't have much time, Darren. I wasn't okay. I kept thinking about what the doctor said about my ovary. I thought if I had stronger material, it would counteract my decreased fertility. So the Clark Kent material wasn't good enough for you. You decided you needed Superman to do it with his superhuman stuff. And where did you find it? She looked at me in shock. Where? I shouted. It was Angus, she said quietly. I don't actually remember leaving the house. Logically, I understand that I had to go through two rooms and a corridor to leave the house, but I have no memory of this. I remember that if I had not come out at that moment, I might have done something that I might later regret. I drove out of the house with tires squealing and eventually stopped on a quiet part of the embankment. During the off-season, it was almost deserted. Angus, my best friend, our best man and closest brother in the world, she might as well have stabbed me. Angus and I have been friends since we first met at the age of 18 at university. Both received degrees in art. I took up teaching, and he took up restoration of works of art. Everywhere we went in college, people thought we were brothers, not roommates. We were the same build and skin color, although my eyes were a paler green than his. He was a couple of centimeters shorter than me. We lived in the same room, so I also knew that he was two or five centimeters shorter than me in other faculties. Why did I think about this? Typical man. I now took some small comfort from this realization, I suppose. We were best friends, inseparable at university. He was my best man, and later, I became his. Kaz and Angus only met a couple of weeks before their wedding, as he lived in France for a year, working in a gallery and honing his restoration skills. Kaz laughed when she met him, saying that we must have come from the same pod. He was very happy when he came to the wedding two weeks later, as he had met Kate a few days before. Later she became his wife. He really did fall hard in love, much like I fell in love with Kaz. See, I told you how similar we were. He was at home visiting his parents on the Lancashire coast and met Kate at their church. His and Kate's parents belonged to what I called the happy applause born again. Church. He was a member of the church, but of course, he didn't make a problem of it in the student union bar. However, he was a member of the Christian union, and I knew that he was a virgin and intended to remain so until marriage. When he later married Kate, I know they were both virgins. I knew he was worried about it on the morning of the wedding, so I tried to reassure him. Anxiety and virginity don't make for a fulfilling wedding night, I guess. In any case, at the wedding, everyone in her family decided that I was his brother, and not his three real brothers who were also there since I was the most like him. I was an only child, so that connection with Angus was very important to me. I treasured her. He truly was my closest brother and friend for 37 years. I loved him. Kate and Angus had four children, three girls, Rachel, Ruth, and Rian, before we had Scott. Six months after Scott was born, they welcomed a boy, Jake. Having an only child, I enjoyed being Darren's uncle, both to that time and to Kaz's two nephews. Although they lived on the opposite coast from us, it was only a few hours away, so we tried to visit them since we only had one child to transport. Scott loved being part of this big family, and every two months or so we would get together for holidays and vacations. Jake and Scott were also best friends. Both, like me, loved everything related to transport. Angus wasn't interested, so I took the boys to car museums, bus shows, and classic car rallies. This was our thing. Angus and I spoke weekly, later texting, and more recently daily jokes and memes we found online. Kate was weird. I really liked her and I could always make her laugh, but sometimes she seemed a little fragile and inflexible to me. Because of their religious beliefs, Harry Potter and Halloween were banned. She insisted that Angus be more involved in the church. Sometimes I thought she was a little hard on Angus when it came to the children. 
On his 40th birthday, she even lost her temper before the party because of some trifle. After the party, we returned home a day early. You see, I wanted to protect him, but I knew better than to come between husband and wife. But she realized that it bothered me and said that she could afford to shout at him in front of me since I knew what he was like. Everyone else always thinks he's perfect, but you and I are the only ones who know him from top to toe. Sitting in the car alone, I realized that I didn't know my older friend at all. In fact, I didn't have a single old friend. The two people I trusted most in the world betrayed me, and all I have left is Scott. But what if he doesn't need me either? I immediately texted Scott. I needed to see him before he saw Kaz. I needed to tell him that no matter what happens, he will always be my son, and nothing will ever change that. I could only hope that he would feel the same way about me. We managed to buy several apartments, and he lived in one of them. When he first saw me approaching his small apartment, he became alarmed and immediately said, God, Dad, you look terrible. Are you sick? Coming up to me to hug me, he pulled away. Are you sick? You stink. What's happening? I repeated what happened as best I could and said I always wanted to be his dad before breaking into tears. He took my face in his hands as if I were a child and he was a father and said, You are the best father, my only father. I don't even want to know who this other guy was. I don't need to know this. He doesn't mean anything to me. It doesn't matter. I don't want to ever meet him. He must have seen me wince at these, as it seemed to him, encouraging words. I've already met him, haven't I, Dad? I can see it in your face. I could only nod. Who is he? Uncle Angus. Crap! I'm going to kill him. Stay here. I'll talk to Mom. I washed my face as best I could. Now I needed to be strong for him. I couldn't shake the feeling that just a few hours ago, my life seemed almost perfect. Now it was all a lie. Every foundation on which I had built my life had crumbled, except my love for Scott. After my shower, I put on some sweatpants and Scott's T-shirt. They were a little tight, but I knew he wouldn't mind. He returned in less than an hour, boiling. He also had a small bag of my clothes. I told her that you will stay here for the night, and tomorrow before one o'clock in the afternoon she must pack her things. She can move here and we can move home. Why shouldn't you be in your own bed just because she wanted to get into someone else's? I won't leave her alone with her father and how I feel about her at the moment. I doubt I'll be talking to her anytime soon. What else did she say, son? She said that she loves you and that we will get through this as a family. She's delusional, Dad. Gone mad. You know that I can never forgive her, don't you? I don't care that it was just one time and because she was desperate. She deceived me and lied to me every day for twenty years. I can't forgive this. You need to talk to her yourself, Dad. Although I don't think anything is happening now. From what she said, it wasn't just a one-time thing. I already gave her a spare key, so tomorrow after school you can just go home as usual. I'll meet you there. You can go to work tomorrow, right? Probably not, but it's a school day before half term, so I can handle it. It's very frowned upon there for you to be sick or anything else the day before we leave for the holidays. They think we are faking it for cheap flights. Scott handed me the bag and said, Dad, I think I have everything you need here. Take the rest from me. Mom reluctantly allowed me to take some things, but I left her no choice. I'm sorry I won't be here when you get up, Dad. It's very early for me to get up, but I'm just a phone call away. We will get through this, and I will be with you every step of the way. I was so proud of this young man. I looked at him and said quietly, It's me who has to support you. That's my job. Dad, you always took care of me, and now it's my turn to take care of you. I won't lie. I'm shocked and very angry. The only difference is that I personally didn't lose anything. I still have you, and my mother is there if I choose to accept her. This is my decision, and I don't know what it will be yet. I haven't lost anything, but you have. I promise you, you will never lose me. See what I told you. How can you not love this child? To my surprise, I managed to get some sleep. I heard Scott leave the house around four in the morning. I knew it would be early, but I didn't think it would be this early. I managed at school, but only just barely. 
I didn't learn anything from the training course, and when I was asked a question, I had to excuse myself. I got away with it, but during a tea break, my closest colleague Graham asked if I was okay. I told him I thought I had a migraine, and he agreed I didn't look well. We finished by 4 p.m., and I wandered around the nearby supermarket for a bit. I didn't want to come home and find Kaz still there. At 5.15 p.m., I turned toward the house, only to find Kaz's car parked in her usual spot. Great. I almost turned back again, feeling that the imaginary migraine would soon become reality. Well, I guess sooner or later I'll have to find out the truth. Better to get this over with. Kaz greeted me with a smile. I didn't expect you to be here, I said quietly. I know, I promised Scott, but I wanted to. No, I needed to talk to you first. Yes, but you have already proven that your promises mean little. Just let me explain everything, and then I'll go to Scott, I promise. I understand that you were in terrible shock, but I have to explain everything. I want to know the whole truth, Kaz. I can't promise that it will change anything, but I swear, if I find out that you missed something, I will never talk to you again. Have you spoken to Angus? Asked Kaz. Why should I talk to him? Well, I just wanted you to know that I didn't tell him that you knew. I wanted to talk to you first. Thank you. I'm sure putting me first at least once was difficult for you. So the word is up to you. I'll try my best not to interrupt. You know how desperately I wanted to have a child. All these tears every month. You hugged me and reassured me. But it wasn't enough. I desperately wanted to have a child. Angus was the perfect man, you see. He looked like you, but in the end, it didn't matter, because Scott was so much like me. I couldn't risk it, you know. He looked so much like you in appearance and was already the father of three girls. Kate told me that all he had to do was look at her and she was already pregnant. So, how exactly did you bring up this topic with my best friend? Hi, Angus. It looks like your oldest and dearest friend is not up to the task when it comes to impregnating me. You are tried and tested in the business of creating children. Would you like to try? Darren, no, it wasn't like that. He knew you felt like you were letting me down. I knew how much you were suffering. He agreed to help us only for your sake. I just wanted to help. So help my wife, you mean? No, it wasn't like that. He was only going to be a donor. When we first met in a hotel, it certainly wasn't intimate. We were going to use a medical syringe. That was the plan. He went to the bathroom, took a shower, and did his business. He said that being in the shower helps. Then I'll go to the door, and he'll hand me his things and promise not to enter the room until I come to my senses. We would see less of each other's bodies than we had seen many times before on the beach or in the pool. It felt strange and very sterile. I began to doubt that this was the way I wanted to conceive a child for us. I remained lying on the bed, but took off my panties so that I could do it as quickly as possible when he was ready. But he couldn't do it. Nothing worked out. He came out wrapped in a towel. He needed something to excite him. I simply could not miss this opportunity to get pregnant. You probably understand this? No, I don't understand, Kaz. I really don't understand. So I lifted my skirt and showed it to him. I'm really sorry. I thought that if I didn't see his face, I could pretend it was you. And then everything will be okay. But it wasn't normal, Darren. It was terrible. Worst sexual experience of my life. He was smaller than you, naturally. He was useless. He just didn't seem to know what to do. How he was able to conceive three children is beyond me. He has nothing in common with you. After we finished, he sat on the edge of the bed and cried. I thought it was guilt for what we did. Guilt for you. I hugged him to tell him it was okay, and he kissed me on the cheek and said, It was the best thing in my life. I never knew it could be like this. So good. Thank you. When he sobbed in my arms, this big, strong man who looked so much like you, I just couldn't believe it. Did he think it was good? He thanked me for my worst fuck ever. I don't think I've ever felt so sorry for anyone in my life. He just risked his marriage, his family, and your friendship to give us our family. I was indebted to him, and then I decided to thank him properly. I didn't plan this. It just happened at that moment. It had nothing to do with you or me. 
It was something separate. I didn't love him or care about him. It was a mixture of gratitude and pity for him. He had the family we so desperately wanted, but he didn't have the love we had. He really didn't know anything. So now we've moved on to sex out of pity? I guess you could say that if you want to be rude. I continued to hug him, rock him, and his head dropped to my chest. Then I started teaching him about sex, just like you taught me. The only difference was that you taught me how to make love. It was just sex, the mechanics of good sex. There was no love, honestly. Yes, I did things for him that he had never experienced with Katie, and I enjoyed his pleasure, as you often did with me. But it wasn't about me. It was about him. I've never done anything for him that I haven't done with you. How reassuring. I was always convinced of this. When we met, I came home and made love to you. I couldn't bear the thought of you missing out on something. In those days, it was always the same for you. But I didn't have the same experience, did I? I had sloppy seconds. He still had a faithful wife, and I had a traitor. This time I made it to the sink as I started to choke. Trying to pull myself together, I splashed cold water on my face and turned to ask her another question. At that moment, I noticed Scott at the door with a phone in his hand. He put a finger to his lips and slowly backed away from the doorway. I didn't know how much he needed to hear this, but I trusted that he would do the right thing. Kaz, I bet you had a good laugh at my expense, humiliating me. No, Darren, no, we never did that. We both loved you so much. It was actually easier if we never talked about you when we were dating. I told Angus in advance that if he asked to compare sex with him or with you, he would always lose, so he never went back to it. So Scott was right? So this continued? Was this not just a one-time incident? Kaz looked at me. Would that change anything? I shook my head. Yes, it lasted, although not for long. I got pregnant that very first time. I felt it. I just knew. They say some women know and I knew. When I came home to you that evening and we made love, I felt different too. I really relaxed and just enjoyed making love with my wonderful husband. I wasn't worried about conceiving. It's been a long time since we made love without that end goal. I just loved you, Darren. You are the only man I have ever loved. I made love with only one man, you. Then why continue? Was this some kind of training exercise on your part? Well, I had to. We wanted more children, so I had to keep trying with him. When Scott was about eight months old, we met in Leeds. We always met there. Never in the same place twice. We were careful. Angus was then able to leave, as things had calmed down after Jake was born. Leeds was an ideal location, as it was central. About an hour and a half drive from home for each of us. If we were lucky with transport, everything was in order, we could get out. We did the same thing until you started messing around with that damn DNA pedigree. Don't even think about accusing me of being a traitor. I don't deserve any of this. I did everything I could to make you happy. Haven't I been a good loving husband and a good provider? You were a wonderful husband, the best. You were my absolute world, but you couldn't give me the only thing I really wanted, a child. I held my breath in shock that she could actually say that out loud. I knew you wanted it too, and I found a way to give it to you. I just stared at her in shock before slowly starting to clap my hands. Perfect solution. It's interesting that I don't have a house full of kids, isn't it? The big family we always dreamed of. We tried until you were 45, didn't we? Then we realized and accepted that this simply would not happen. How long did you and Angus try? Not long before you and I stopped trying. In a few months, perhaps. Are you seriously telling me that you had sex with my supposed best friend for ten years? God, I must be the stupidest person in the world. Complete idiot. I wasted my life. It was all a lie. I collapsed into the next chair, and Kaz came over to comfort me. Don't come close to me. You have no right to touch me. Darren, I love you. You haven't lost anything. Everything was real. How can you say it was in vain? All these wonderful memories, all this happiness. We raised a wonderful son together. No, Kaz. We raised your wonderful son together. I was just lucky that after all this, he chose me to be his father. 
Now I knew, no matter what happens, he will always be my son, blood or not. So you just stopped dating Angus, huh? Giving up all that wonderful illicit sex after ten years. Everything was wrong. As soon as I realized that my chances of getting pregnant at that age were slim, I stopped. It wasn't about sex. It was never about sex. That's why I had you. We've always had a wonderful, intimate life, you know. Well, it's a vague memory now, but yes, I thought so. Obviously, this wasn't enough for you. Darren, what I did to him cannot be compared. It simply cannot. It was different. It was separate from us. I won't lie. It got better. In the end, I taught him to do whatever I liked. But even then, even at his best, he still couldn't compare to you. I couldn't because I wasn't you. Suddenly I was older, I was laid off, and my new job made it harder to break free. In any case, this whole thing started to bore me. I've come to terms with the fact that we just have Scott, and that's how it was meant to be. All this driving is for nothing. I'm sorry that your infidelity has become such a routine for you, Kaz. My heart is bleeding. And how did Angus come to terms with the fact that it was all over? That sex that, even when everything was bad for you, made him cry because it felt so good. He had a shitty sex life with his own wife, but it looks like he had a damn great one with mine, doesn't it? You're twisting everything around, Darren. It wasn't like that. Yes, he liked sex, of course he did, and he's a man, isn't he? He really did it for us, can't you see? So that we can have more children. He proved it when I told him it had to end. Yes, he was disappointed, but he accepted that it had to stop. He was sad, but he agreed. So that was all, huh? Yes, except one more time. Do you remember his 50th birthday? He was very depressed. I asked again. But this was completely different. I'm really ashamed of this. It was dirty. I knew that I was actually unfaithful that time. I sincerely regret this. You just regret one thing. Treating him for his birthday? What's another piece of already sliced loaf, Kaz? So, how often have you two met during this decade of trying to give me another child? Every few months, three or four times a year, when I was most fertile. I paused to think about it. So you had sex with him about 40 times, perhaps more because in some cases you did it more than once. You say it in such a way that it sounds cheap and tasteless. It was so, Kaz. It was cheap. You made it look cheap just like he made you look cheap. Have you ever found it strange that the first time you get pregnant right away and then he tries 50 times or so when you're at your most fertile and it never happens again? Well, I assumed it was because of me, and I didn't lose hope that it would work with him or with you. Thank you for not forgetting about me in this deal to conceive a child. Yes, I could still impregnate you. Maybe it was you? Unfortunately, Kaz, I have some shocking news for you, too. It doesn't compare to the fact that you tore my whole life apart, but it will be interesting for you. Unfortunately, Kaz, you had no hope of getting pregnant with Angus. Right before Jake was born, he had a vasectomy. He only told me about it. In fact, I dropped him off and picked him up. He begged me not to tell anyone. I was embarrassed to keep a secret from you, but since I was sure that it had nothing to do with you, loyalty to my friend for once prevailed. Even Kate didn't know anything. He knew that this did not fit into the framework of her church beliefs. He was to have four children under the age of six. He just couldn't risk any more pregnancies. No, Kaz screamed. So he didn't want to have any more children. He was just having sex, and he continued when she shuddered. The traitor who thought so little about her marriage vows, who thought so little about her husband, who was obviously her world, that she lied and deceived him for 21 years. You killed that love when you first met him in a hotel room before you even slept with him. You deceived me, destroyed the trust between us. What you did after that and continued to do was pure evil. If that's your idea of love, you can keep it. Kaz looked at me, stunned, as if the thought of finally telling the truth would clear her of all her past wrongdoings and lead to her being forgiven. I couldn't believe that this woman, whom I loved and respected, could be so stupid and value so little what she did to me and our family. You were unfaithful to me because of what you wanted and needed. 
It had nothing to do with me. You fed your ego by thinking you were some kind of sex guru. Don't tell me you kept trying to get pregnant. I think you got a kick out of the secrecy, the lies, and making me look like a fool. I'll never forgive you, Kaz. Never. Get out of my sight. I don't want to look at you. Turning, she finally saw Scott standing in the doorway. How much have you heard? Enough to know that my mother is a selfish bitch. Scott, please, she whimpered. No, before you go, you need to hear this. Today I visited your lover. I left very early. I didn't expect to stay so long. I didn't think it was fair that he could destroy our family and go unpunished. I also wanted to tell him that I would never see him again and make sure he knew that I have the same father and his name is Darren. He looked a little shocked when he saw me come to breakfast. He worried that this was bad news. For him, it was like that. By the way, Mom, Aunt Kate really wants to talk to you. She seems very unhappy with you. This was before she knew the whole story. Luckily, she will be able to listen to most of your confession to Dad, as I thought it would be wise to write down everything you said for her. I was sure that she would want to listen, too. Kaz just watched, stunned, as Scott continued his tirade. At least you were honest in the end. Angus decided to try to lie. Allegedly, I was given an injection, but he was only trying to help. There was no sex. I told Aunt Kate that I didn't think that was true. Ryan looked the most upset. It turned out that she had been in love with me for years. And to be honest, I felt the same way. Thank God we never did anything. Then he turned to me. Dad, I also took the liberty of hitting your ex-best friend in the face. Pretty hard. Just one hit, but I did it for you, Dad. Knew you couldn't risk assault charges and losing your job. I think I'm safe since he won't dare tell on me, especially since I'm sure Aunt Kate did a lot more damage by kneeing him in the balls. He turned to his mother again. Are you still here? At least you have a place to stay tonight. Angus is probably already in a cheap hotel. Kate kicked him out. I gave her your apartment address. I would look forward to her visit. I knew I would never be able to get over the betrayal. She was always on my team, we were one, and realizing that she wasn't on my side broke my heart. The sexual part of the affair was bad and enough to end us. But what really broke me was the thought of him holding her, stroking her hair, telling her she was beautiful. Affectionate and intimate moments that I felt were just a part of us, that were part of a special magic that only we shared. It was these thoughts that kept me up at night over the next few weeks as I began to face my new reality. I felt like I could never consider myself good enough again. She chose someone else to give her the precious gift that I wanted so much to give her but was too selfish to take the time to give to me. I trusted her with my life, and losing that trust changed me in ways I could never have imagined. When I thought about how much they had been together, I thought about how little we had been together in the last few years. Clearly, Kaz had decided that her sex life was over. She made this decision, like so many others, without thinking about my needs or feelings in this scenario. The thought was ridiculous, but I kept thinking that if her sex life and desire eventually dried up, what a shame that she spent so much on him. It wasn't fair. It was all dishonest. I guess you're wondering what I did with my ex-girlfriend. For six weeks, I did nothing. I talked to Kate, and even met her when she came to see me. But I knew that if Angus approached me, I would not be able to answer for my actions. He was blocked in everything. I knew that Kate, like me had filed for divorce. I also knew that none of his children spoke to him. The girls were pretty angry, but Jake was the worst. He spoke to his father only once, and that was to tell him that he wanted me to be his father. I'm sure it must hurt. Okay. Each of the children contacted me in one way or another to make sure I was okay. I was worried about Rain as she was taking it the hardest. I think her feelings for Scott were stronger than she thought, and the fact that they shared DNA shocked and shocked her. Kate and I had a long conversation. She loved Angus, but found him very demanding. She said she felt like he was just another child to take care of, and his selfishness at home, alone, was shocking. She felt like he wasn't supportive as a father, and only made an effort when others were around, especially me and Kaz. We both agreed that they had done a very good job of fooling us, and neither of us had any idea that anything was going on. 
but why should we suspect? Both were faithful spouses, although I was happier than she. We trusted them, and that was the main thing. They used our love, trust, and faith in them against us. Kate and I will remain friends, and I have to say she seemed more relaxed without Angus's pressure. I hoped that in that moment I would always be present in her and her children's lives. I saw Angus one more time before Christmas. I went to Kate, Jake, and the girls. I needed to see them all face to face and tell them my news. I wanted to see Angus one last time to tell him I hated him for ruining my life. I wasn't going to listen to his excuses. What was the point? What I didn't expect was schadenfreude. I thought he would try to apologize, but no. Perhaps he knew there was no point. Perhaps he blamed me for everything he lost. In the end, he got away with everything until I revealed the truth. So I slept with your wife and gave her the only thing she really wanted, a child. I can't change anything. I can't say anything in my defense, and what's the point? I know you hate me and I don't blame you, but I don't regret it. It is believed that when you are on your deathbed, you wish you had more sex. Well, the only good sex I had was with Kaz. No, I didn't love Kaz. It was your job. But I loved sex. I loved the way she made me feel. I know I had to lie to her to keep it going. Even now, alone in this hole, it was worth it. Even hurting you, my oldest friend, was worth it. Knowing that Scott is mine is worth it too. When he finished, I just showed him my phone. I showed him the message that had arrived in my mailbox the day before from the pedigree company. It said Scott was my son. It was the best Christmas present of my life. I think this was the best gift for Scott and Ryan. Five years later, my life has changed in ways I could never have imagined. Kaz and I, of course, divorced, although now I can be in the same room with her if necessary, I avoid it. After her confession, we never had a full conversation. What's the point of this? She tried to come to school to see me several times, but I soon put an end to this by quickly filing a restraining order. She thought that once I found out that Scott was really mine, there would be a chance for us to reconcile. It turned out that she knew me as little as I knew her. We communicated through lawyers until the divorce became final. I kept the house, and Kaz kept two apartments, bought together. Their cost was equal to the cost of the house, and thus she could earn additional income by renting out one apartment. The third apartment was supposed to be sold, and we would split the proceeds. But in the end, we agreed through lawyers that we would give this apartment to Scott. I think we were both happy about it. Scott moved into this apartment, and Jake lived with me as my surrogate son for a while while he was in graduate school. I didn't deal with loneliness very well, so I was grateful for his company. Scott and I are still very close. He loves his mom, and she is still in his life. He may love her, but I'm afraid he doesn't like her very much. He feels very well that she cheated on him and our family just as much as she cheated on me. She lives alone, claims he doesn't go on dates. I guess it's not easy to go there when you don't want to have sex. Maybe over time she will find someone to talk to or get a cat. Eventually, Angus moved to Spain. Ruth is the only child who visited him. She said he was full of self-pity and drank too much. He seems very bitter about how things have turned out for him. Apparently all that sex wasn't worth it after all. Okay. As for me, tonight I am sitting at the table with my new wife, son, and daughter-in-law. I hold the most gorgeous granddaughter that ever lived on my lap, and we eat. Kate is here too. No, we didn't meet. That would never have happened. She met someone, David, but he's at work today. He's a great guy and makes her very happy. Kate is here not only because she now holds the title of my oldest friend, but also because we share a granddaughter, Lucy. Ryan and Scott got married very quietly a couple of years ago. As soon as they found out that they could be together, they did not waste time admitting their true feelings. They married quietly, partly because they wanted it, but also because Rian had become distant from Angus and refused to have anything to do with Kaz. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but it gives me great pleasure. Rian doesn't mind Lucy seeing her grandmother when Scott arrives, but she will never be welcome in their home and will never allow her to look after Lucy alone. The real joy in my life is my wife Abigail. 
It was when I was at my lowest and unsure of myself that she came along and helped me feel better. She worked as a part-time teacher at the school and we immediately hit it off. We fell in love very quickly and I soon rediscovered the joys of making love to a man who wants you as much as you want him. We got married 18 months later and are very happy. We enjoy living in retirement. Abigail is widowed and has no children, so she believes that the sun rises and sets with little Lucy. She admits that she never thought she would experience the love of a child and be called Granny. She is very happy that she can share her life with her. Scott tells me that Kaz is very bitter that Abigail gets to enjoy her retirement with her husband, her son, and her granddaughter. As Scott said, whose fault is it, Mom? Definitely not Abigail, definitely not my father's, and definitely not mine. You can't argue with that. Subscribe to our channel so that your second chaff doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story, because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think about listening to the next one.